Hi everyone, in today's lecture we will derive a relation between the maximum current at which a fuse wire melts and the radius of the wire. So let's see what is the relation between the maximum current, the limiting current and the radius of the fuse wire. Now what is a fuse? You must be knowing that a fuse wire is basically a safety device that breaks an electric circuit when the current becomes too high. So let's say you have an expensive device and the rating of this device, the maximum current that this device can take, let's say the rated current is let's say 10 amperes. So if the current becomes more than 10 amperes, this device will burn. Now this is very expensive, right? So you want to save this device. So what we will do, we will keep a fuse wire. This is your fuse wire in series to the device and we will make sure that the limiting current of this fuse wire again what is the meaning of limiting current it is that current at which the fuse wire will melt above that current the fuse wire will melt okay so we have to put a fuse wire here whose maximum current at which it will melt should be exactly equal to 10 ampere so now what happens till the current is 9 ampere 8 ampere, 9.5 ampere, 9.9 .9 ampere, no problem. This current will flow and this device will work. But once the current becomes more than the maximum current, which is 10 ampere, this fuse wire will melt. Once it melts, the circuit will be open and therefore this device will be safe. So basically the fuse wire is like a side hero, which dies to keep the main hero alive. Okay. Now, how to derive the relation between the radius of the fuse wire and the maximum current that it can take. So let's say you have a cylindrical fuse wire. The radius of this fuse wire is R and therefore the area of cross section will be pi R square, isn't it? Circular cross section and the length of this wire is L. And this wire is made up of a material whose resistivity is rho. Then the resistance of this wire is given by the formula rho L by E, which would be rho L by pi R square. Right? This formula you will learn in class 10 also and in class 12 also. Now, when current I flows through this wire, this wire gets heated, right? And the power developed is given by the formula I square R. Assuming the resistance remains constant. And that would be equal to I square into what is the resistance? Rho L by area of cross section pi R square. So this much power is dissipated in the fuse wire or in this resistance. Because of this power consumption, the wire will get hot, right? Now, before the current flows, the temperature of this wire would be equal to the surrounding temperature, let's say T naught, which would be, let's say, 27 degrees Celsius. So this would be the starting temperature, right? Now, once current flows, this power consumption happens and therefore the wire gets heated and its temperature will start rising. And once temperature becomes more than the surrounding temperature, we know from class 11 concept of Stephen's law that this wire will start radiating heat, right? It will lose heat in the form of radiation. And the power loss due to the radiation is given by Stephen's law, which is equal to emissivity of this wire, Stephen's constant, area of the surface from where the radiation is emitted and temperature of the wire power 4. This would be the formula if you neglect the room temperature. But if you assume the room temperature is not negligible, then you can include the room temperature also. So this formula you study in class 11, right? Now one thing you have to be careful, this area of the surface should not be confused with the area of cross section. So if this is the wire, the heat will be radiated from the surface and since this area is very small compared to this lateral surface, 
we need to consider this area to be only the lateral surface or the curved surface. This area of wires are usually very small compared to this area, right? So this area of the surface can be written as 2 pi r into L. So this is the uh, lateral surface area of a cylindrical wire, right? Temperature power 4 minus T naught power 4. Now, please understand this current keeps flowing and therefore this power keeps getting developed. And as this power keeps getting developed in the wire, the wire gets hot, the wire gets heated. So its temperature starts rising. So initially, let's say this power was 10 joules per second. Okay. And initially, the temperature of the body was same as surrounding temperature, right, initially. So that time the power loss was zero. So at the start, this much power is consumed by the fuse wire and there is no loss of power right now. But once it starts consuming this power, its temperature will start increasing. And once this temperature starts increasing, this power loss also starts increasing. So initially it was zero, now it will become one joule per second. But even now you can see 10 joules it is consuming, only one joule it is losing. So still nine joules it is still absorbing, right? So its temperature will further rise. As temperature will further rise, power loss will again rise. So it will become two joules, three joules, four joules, right? One day this power loss will become equal to 10 joules. So if I assume current and resistance is constant in this fuse wire, then this power consumed is also constant, right? If this is constant, this is constant, this is also constant. So a time will come when the power loss will equal the power consumed. After that, what will happen? After that, it will no longer absorb any power because whatever power it consumes, absorbs, same power it is radiating. So once that will happen, temperature will stop changing and that is called the steady state. Okay. So once steady state reaches, the power consumed equals the power loss. Power consumed from the current is I square R and power loss due to its temperature being more than the surrounding temperature is equal to E Stephens constant 2 pi R L T power 4 minus T naught power 4. And resistance we already wrote rho L by area of cross section which was pi r square, isn't it? Now when this current will reach the limiting value, the max current, this temperature will become just equal to the melting point of the wire. So when this much current flows, the wire will just melt, meaning above this current, temperature will become more than melting point, so the wire will melt. Below this current, temperature will be below the melting point, so the wire will not melt. So if you assume this is the maximum current, then you can cross multiply and check that I square will be proportional to R square into R will be what? R cube. And what about uh, any dependence of current with length of the wire? No dependence. Why? Because the length gets cancelled. That's why you know that the fuse wires are usually short, right? So the length doesn't matter. So therefore, the maximum current at which the wire will just melt is directly proportional to radius power 3 by 2. So this is the relation. Okay. So let's do a small application of this concept. This is a question that says the permissible current, permissible current here means the maximum current which can be permitted, right? The permissible current in a fuse wire of radius 0.1 millimeter is 2 ampere. What is the permissible current in the fuse wire of radius 0.4 millimeter? Okay. So this is the given data. This is the radius of the first wire 0.1 millimeter. Then radius of the second wire is 0.4 millimeter. So four times we have increased the radius. Current in the first case is 2 ampere. The maximum current beyond which it will melt we need to find the maximum current in the second case. So already we learned that I is proportional to R power 3 by 2, isn't it? That means I1 by I2 
will be R1 by R2 power 3 by 2. So current in the first case is 2 ampere. In the second case we need to find radius in the first case is 0.1 divided by this is 0.4. You realize millimeter millimeter will cancel. So power 3 by 2. Now 3 by 2 can be written half power 3 also right. The same thing isn't it. So this will be 2 by I1, 2 by I2 equals to this point, point you can remove. So 1 by 4 power half power 3. Now power half means square root. So square root of 1 is 1 only, square root of 4 is 2 power 3. So 2 cube will be 8. If you cross multiply, I2 will be 16 amperes. So much larger than this current, isn't it? 